Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat here. I'm today with Tanami's ratings from December 12th, 2020. Let's start with the top of the block. At the start of the block, we had Dragon Ball Super at a 0.25. Then we had Sword Online, Alicization, War of the Underworld Part 2 at a 0 0.20. Fire Force at a 0 0.20. The Assassination Classroom at a 0 0.16. Jimaceta Death Beats at a 0.14, followed by a 0.13. Naruto Shippuden at a 0.13. And Demon Slayer at a 0.12. Overall, this was a much improved ratings week for the block. And I just want to kind of go show by show here. And Dragon Ball Super, I mean, this is the ceiling we've gotten from the reruns of 0.25. So when it hits that, usually the rest of the block does well. And yeah, the, the rest of the block did do well after that, you know. You have Alicization at a 0.20. I believe this is only the second time, maybe only the first time actually, that Part 2, or the Underworld Part 2, has hit a 0.2 on this block. Welcome sight to see. It was starting to have all the signs of a being an underperforming premiere. And again, this is notable. Tanami, this is, like I said, one of the only two dub premieres we got on Tanami this year, along with War of the Underworld Part 1. <laughs> you know, so a lot of expectations were put into this, and they're starting to show signs that might finally be living up to it. Fire Force Season 2 at a 0 0.20. Again, this is, I'm, I'm certain, the highest rating Fire Force Season 2 has gotten. And honestly, this is probably one of the top so many overall ratings Fire Force got. I believe in its initial run, it barely even hit point two. Uh, the initial run of Season 1, I mean. And kind of an interesting tidbit I want to point out. Like, usually on Tuesday, I look at the Showbuzz Daily ratings for these shows. And what Showbuzz, Showbuzz Daily doesn't only just show... The total viewers, it doesn't just show the rating, it also splits it up by gender. And this is interesting because, if you know Tanami, historically the overwhelming majority of Tanami's audience is male. Contrary to what Jason DeMarco, like, once, oh, that's, a, that's another story, Jason DeMarco once tweeted, a majority of our audience is female, and I did a separate video completely debunking that, you know, using numbers, you know, from Showbuzz Daily. But Showbuzz Daily, a very interesting thing here. First time I've at least noticed that Fire Force, it actually had a higher rating among females of the 18 to 49 age group than males. 0.21 for females and 0.19 for males. That's an interesting tidbit because what people, some people said when season two started airing, people talking about, man, Fire Force has been underperforming. And a reason a lot of people gave was that the first episode of the season was chock full of fan service. And that they say that that drove away any female viewers. Well, this rating, the broken down rating, which you don't, which we're not going to see here because it's in Showbuzz Daily, not whoever put this up for uh, Tanami's Reddit, had it had majority female viewership. You know, so we know that 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 rumor is fake news, basically. You know, but again, and then you have after that, you have probably the biggest question mark of the block this week. That being a Sashation Classroom. Overall, it built 1 100th from what it did last week. So it went up. However, it didn't go up as much as anyone else around it did. So instead of Assassination Classroom building, as it had done three of the previous four weeks from Fire Force, you have it almost kind of a scary low drop. Because usually the middle of the block has become notorious for great retention on Tanami, even on bad nights. That used to be the one guarantee you would get Tanami, is like even if the ratings are low. They're not plummeting show to show. They just kind of stay low the entire night. However, you have it going from 0.20 in Fire Force to a 0.16 here. And I've seen people talk about this, and some people are saying how it just means that Assassination Classroom might just have a lower ceiling than we thought. And considering that ceiling just happened to be higher than the floor of War of the Underworld Part 2 and Fire Force, it gave the appearance that Assassination Classroom is very popular when it really isn't. That's an understandable theory. I don't think it's true, but I can definitely see how one comes to that. And then you have another puzzling fact, the fact that Jim Aceto Death Beats actually had a good night, getting the highest rating since week two of it airing, which I found to be interesting and almost cruelly ironic because the fact these are the last episodes that will ever air on Tommy. You know, since the last four episodes will be airing this upcoming Sunday night in a block to burn off the rest of the series. And it's just one of those interesting ironies. And then you can't really say much about Shippuden and Demon Slayer after that. 
ship it in, I don't want to spoil, but a very important character shows up for the first time. And it held well from Death Beats. It lost 5,000 total viewers, and it held at least to 100 the same rating. And then Demon Slayer... Demon Slayer is just a cultural monster right now. It's Hell's gonna break loose when Season 2 airs, because you know people are gonna be hyped for that to be on Tanami. At least, Tanami better pick it up, because Demon Slayer is a, has apparently become this such a big cultural force right now. Like I think it's starting to get close. The Mugen, Tra Mugen Train, I forgot if I'm pronouncing it, the movie... Came out that came out in Japan. It is getting dangerously close to becoming the highest grossing film in Japanese history, which I believe is currently held by Spirited Away, the Studio Ghibli flick. Which, I mean, if that happens, that's just saying something right there, you know? But yeah, ultimately, this week, very good week. Probably the best week we've had since there was that one weird aberration week in, like, September where everything went up nearly a tenth and then went right back down the next week and no one had any idea why. So that's probably, the this is probably the best week we've had since then. Only real downside is a SNAP Station classroom didn't really live up to expectations, perhaps. And the fact that, and there's a cruel, cruel irony in this, actually, I forgot to mention here. This is the last new Tanami we have this year. Because we have the Corporate Synergy event this upcoming Saturday with Wonder Woman and Justice League. The week after that, we have the Cowboy Bebop Marathon. And then the week after that, which is, I believe, January 3rd, might be a marathon. We don't know. So it's possible we don't get another new Tanami until January 10th. And January 10th is probably when we get SSSS Gridman. So that's going to be an interesting thing to stay tuned on. Because we're going to have to get a new schedule soon because we have multiple... Because we have Death Beats leaving the block. And we're probably going to have a show shuffle around. Because I honestly doubt we're going to have SSSS Gridman air that late. You know? But ultimately, and that's the cruel irony in this. The cruel irony is that the best week we have is right when everything's going to have to take a mandatory three-week hiatus. You know? You have War of the Underworld starting to really kick up. Well, it's going to be off the air for a little while. Fire Force finally starting to live up to the hype of people we're talking about. It's going to have to stop for a few weeks. Assassination Classroom. Steady, so I think since it's been steady, I think Assassination Classroom will ultimately be fine. And then whatever we have at 2 o'clock is going to have to fill in with, admittedly, the very small shoes of Jim Aceto Death Beats. And then Shippin' and Demon Slayer, I fully expect those to be the last two shows again when we get the new uh, schedule sometime in for the first airing, which will be sometime early in 2021. And again, 2021 is going to be a very, very... Very stacked year for anime, especially the winter season. Like, just take a look at, like, the list. Like, go look at the list of, like, the anime that are coming back this year. A lot of sequels of specifically shows everyone's been hyped up for. Like, Attack on Titan Season 5 is coming. Promise Neverland Season 2 is coming. Dr. Stone Season 2 is coming. And, and here's another little prediction I'm going to have. Toonami's going to probably get only two of, th of these three. For budgetary reasons, obviously. And unfortunately, since things don't go my way, the one they're going to leave out will probably be Promise Neverland Season 2. That's my bold prediction for the start of 2021, is that we will not get that. It will be the... It will be... It will be the uh, Boruto, basically, of 2021, I guess. Or the Mob Psycho Season 2 of 2021, probably be more fitting. Again, what do you guys think? What are your opinions on these ratings? How do you think Tanami should schedule the lineup? Are you excited for SSSS Gridman? That's coming up sometime early next year. We're probably going to get something, like I said, Attack on Titan Season 5 somewhere soon. Dr. Stone Season season 2 coming up somewhere soon. What do you guys think? Do you like this? Do you like more Tanami news content like this? Please like, please comment, and subscribe. I am the Super Orange Cat, and that is all.